Welcome, church. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath to all of you. Ms. Patty, before you jump out of here, I want to tell you thank you for that song. You know, it was, um, it was wonderful. The image I had was a spiritual done with hula skirts and uh, patent shit leather shoes. You know? <laughs> what? And it was, it was very good. I enjoyed it. Thank it's going to be a good day. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Certainly so. Okay. So, I entitled this talk. Are we just another denomination? That's a question. Are we? Just another denomination. Not supposed to be. We're a movement. That's what I like to hear. We're a movement. You know, I, in, in studying this little bit here in Hebrews um, 3 and 1, I to explain it and everything and to, to dig in, I think we really, you know, you start to go back because, well, let's just, the first word is wherefore. Okay, so if it's wherefore, then we got to get something that's back there. Let's see what it's there for. Yeah, what is it there for, right? So let us start back in um, chapter 2 of Hebrews, and maybe we'll go in verse 9. Be a good place to start, okay? I take everybody's doing well, had a good week. We're here. Amen. I, I like to see our numbers be better, but it's, it's God willing, it's coming. Um, I think that, uh, I think this is the best of times and the worst of times, isn't it? Amen. So let us, let us begin. When we see Jesus, is that who we come to see today? Mm -hmm. Who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he, my, he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. So, so what is this saying to us here? Was Jesus just born a baby, putting on human flesh? Or had he always been? I mean, have I moving around too much for you? No, no, no. Has he always been? Yes. Let Jesus. Us, let us create man in our image. Let us create man in our image, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Without that beginning part of Genesis, you know, there's a lot of questions. And uh, there's, a, there's a literal week that God speaks about in creation. Not some big bang millions of years ago, you know. Um, if we don't take God at his word, we can't take parts out of it that we like and throw away the things that we do not like. The Bible says here a little, there a little. Precept upon precept, line upon line. That's how we build our theology. So I ask us again, are we just another denomination? I don't think so. I don't think so. This, this denomination, if I might say, has, has a historical birthmark, right? A biblical historical birthmark. So let's, let's talk a little bit more about Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels. So, so what is that saying? Who was made, as the Bible says, was made a little lower than the angels? Jesus. 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 Yes. That created them. Right. There you go. Human. The human kind. Right? Yes. We are made a little lower than the angels. Yes. So what Jesus did, what this says, is he put on this equipment, this flesh. Right? And then the next words were, for what? For the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. So, Jesus put on flesh. This is saying, if we're just breaking this all down, and help me, I'm 
mean, that's what you're all here for. I, I think that the best way to do church is for church to be involved. Okay? I think that's the way Paul had it in his day, and I think it's the way that we should do it. So don't be afraid to speak. Okay? So it says that he was to taste death for every man. The second death. Right, not just the sleep. Real death. Death caused by sin. I've been taught that, that it says for the suffering of death, the death that was death itself. Right. That's the first. And then it goes on to uh, say, might taste death for every man. The second. The second. Very good point. Excellent. Absolutely. Now, was Jesus just born to die the second death for us? Because... Because why? Well, why does it require the death? God said that no, the, sin, the, wages of sin is death. the wages of sin is death, right? So somebody had to pay that bill. Because mm -hmm. we were all born under condemnation. Yeah. Jesus came, and this is what I'm trying to get to is the first point here. Because we're at the second point. He lived the life. Ah, there it is. He lived the life of each one of us. Of each one of us. So therefore, Christ, Christ came not only to die for your sins, but to live your perfect life. Praise the Lord. Because God will only accept absolute perfection. And absolute perfection is only found in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, you know, when you can come to think that God is this harsh judge because you're born in condemnation and you didn't have anything to do with it. Wait a second. <laughs> he said a Savior. Yes. And if you choose to die in your sins, you won't die for your sins because Jesus died for your sins. You will simply die of disbelief, unbelief, however you want to put it. Let us continue on in verse 10. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Woo! There's a big one. I, what is that telling us? Jesus had to be made perfect through suffering. Why is that so? How is that possible? That he whom is already perfect and knows all things, he's the creator of all things. It said there, didn't it? But yet it also says that he had to learn something. What is it he had to learn? Obedience. Obedience. Amen. He had to learn obedience. And being made to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Put that uh, perfect. I have circled and put the word complete. Okay. He was complete through dying to self. Complete through dying to self. Perfect. Okay. Mature. Mature. What, is, what does the Bible say about perfection? What is perfection? Doesn't it say, be ye perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect? Yeah. What does that mean? What does that mean? It means that we can live a sinless life as human beings. Very good. We can live a certain. And how do we live a sinless life as human beings? and dying to self. Okay. By being like Christ. By being loving. Right? How is God? God is love. Love. I heard it said today in Sabbath school. It said he, you know, Ricky brought it up that it wasn't his attribute of God. It's not something that God has. I, I, he has love. Like we may have some love for somebody. <laughs> But God is love. All that he does, all that he is, is because he is love. And he's calling us to be loving. Right? Um, I 
think in one of the Gospels here, and I can't remember which one it's in, I think maybe Brother Luke. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going there, I forget it. Anyways, to be loving. That that is that is the answer. To be like God is to be loving. And this is how we acquire perfection in being like God. This happened last week. Hello? It's going in and out again. You want me to just use a regular hand mic? I got brand spanking new batteries here. Okay, you guys shut me off then? Because I don't want to bang. You muted. We're experiencing technical difficulties. I thought you already did that. You did that. Why did you do that? Mm -hmm. Throw that away. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. The light of my fire. Did you put the batteries in correctly? And he's going to wear those scars 
with a badge of like a badge of honor because he is the most humble, humble. How do you even put this to words? I can't even speak it. There's nobody like Jesus. Words just fall flat. Let us continue. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. Who is this? What is, what is he talking about? Saying, I will declare thy name. Who's talking? Unto my brother. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. Who's speaking? <laughs> or in verse 13. <coughs> for, as, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. See, the devil thought he had Jesus right where he wanted him. He thought he could destroy him. And he did harm him. But he no wise destroyed him. <laughs> Jesus destroyed all of his power. You see... The devil used to have the keys to hell and death. But when Jesus walked through, he took them out. He took hell and he took death. <laughs> Nobody shall be chained. Unless they choose to be chained. In verse 15, And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Do we subject ourselves to bondage by unbelief? We do, don't we? And how is it? We don't trust God. We don't look to God. We, we, we focus on our own problems and the situations that we have. I had a problem this morning, and I was letting it get to me, and I was all upset. He says, hey, the devil's working on you. I said, yep. You're right. I love good friends that can come up and just slap you right in the face. You know, people that aren't afraid to tell you the way it is. I love that about my brother Ricky. Anyways, let's move on. Verse 16. For verily, he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. What is that telling us? Yeah, but he's not a human that took on the, 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 the nature of Adam, that's saying, isn't it? Mm. It's saying he took on the nature of or Abraham. You follow me? Andrew. Way down the line. And I don't think, you know, people talk about evolution. Evolution. We're gaining so much ground. We're becoming so much smarter, so much stronger, so much better. I don't see it. I see devolution going on. We're devolving. We're getting less and less. You know, not better and better. I mean, you just take an inanimate object, like this room, and you walk away from it for three years. And we come back here. What is it going to look like? What would this place look like in three years? If we just walked out, never a piece of person walked in here for three years, we came back, and would it be better? Or would it be worse? It would be a mess. It would be a mess. Jesus took on that nature, the mess nature. Okay? And he conquered it. Wherefore in all things it what? It behooved him. The word behooved here is, is where we get our word obligated. Obligated him to be made like unto his brother. And why would you say obligated? Because he's telling us that he wants us to win this victory, right? The same exact way he won the victory. So if he had advantages, how could, how could we 
be asked to do the same thing that he did. Right? So he, he had he had he didn't have any advantage that we don't have. We can do the same kind of work that he did. And how did he do all of his work? Through the Holy Spirit. Right? He allowed the Holy Spirit to lead him, take him off into the desert. The Bible says, and he was led into the desert to be tempted of the devil. Mm -hmm. For 40 days and 40 nights. Mm -hmm. Think about that. But he had that closeness with the Father. Absolutely. That's where his bread came from, huh? He wasn't so concerned with the bread of actual grain. But there did come a time where it was time to eat. And how, what, did the, what was the devil's first temptation? Food. Yeah. For a guy that hasn't eaten in 40 days. You reckon that was tempting? Uh-huh. Yeah. And even more tempting because he could have actually done it. Himself. Himself. Turn the stones into bread. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Absolutely. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. You see, there's churches out there that teach that he didn't really come as a man. And that's a false gospel. That's not the truth. Verse 18. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to help them that are tempted. To lift them up. Because he knows the way. Right? The Bible says, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Amen. Period. He makes no excuse for that. What an awesome big brother that we have, huh? The best. So now we can start and say, wherefore? Wherefore? Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Now we can truly consider this wonderful man, Christ Jesus, who is either a liar, a lunatic, or very God. You have to make the decision. There's plenty of evidence. There's plenty of evidence. God had some, some things here that were sealed up for the time of the end, right? They were sealed up for the time of the end because this church grew out of that, didn't it? With its prophetic birthmark. What, what, what happened? Jesus went from the holy place to the most holy place. And why is that such an important message for the world to hear? Why is it any different than what any other church is teaching? Because the day of atonement is a day of cleansing and purification of the tabernacle, the temple, and our hearts. And our hearts. So we're, that's great. So we're actually living in the anti-typical day of atonement, correct? Mm -hmm. This is the time that God's people would prepare their hearts mm -hmm. so that they can go in. Right? What did they used to do to the priest when he would go in to the most holy place once a year? Put a rope on his leg. And a bell. And a bell. <laughs> and a bell. Yeah. So they could hear him moving. Mm -hmm. And if that bell stopped for a little bit, they could drag the body out. Huh? Yeah. 
So God was pretty serious about this most holy place. Amen. And this day of atonement, this day of at one with God. So that's, that's what our message is to the world. Amen. Brothers and sisters, unless we retain our unique place as the remnant, we have no need to exist. Amen. It's that simple. Unless we retain. Yes? He called the cleansing of the sanctuary. This is the difference. Like if it's if he's doing something now, that is part of our message. Others think that that he's not doing anything now, right. except for taking you know your sins forgiven, your sins forgiven, your sins forgiven. But he's actually changing us. The cleansing of the sanctuary includes us in this typical day of atonement. So that makes our message different than others. Absolutely. Yes, but putting away of sin. A putting away of sin. That, that, that's most important. He's right. putting away our sins. And the sins are, when the sins were put on Jesus, the sacrifice, the sacrifice went into the most holy. And those sins are still, and it's hard to think about it, read great controversy, I think it's chapters 23 and 24, it talks about the sins are still there. They have yes. not been put on the scapegoat yet. Right. As they say. Yes. There's an sure. unfinished work. Involved. Yeah. I get it. And let, let us know that if it wasn't for the cross, okay, Amen. nothing would matter. Amen. But there's people that every week, that, that's, that's where they're at. They think it all ended at the cross. That's where it was finished. And Jesus did say it is finished, Amen. but that was that part of the work. Very good. There was more work to be done. Mm -hmm. And there still is yet more work to be done in God's people, because Jesus is working like crazy. He's never stopped. Cleanser. He is the cleanser. Let us start in verse 2, chapter 3 of Hebrews. Who was faithful to appoint him, to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was accounted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who hath builded the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is builded by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were spoken after. But Christ as a son over his house, whose houses are we. Did you hear that? If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope unto the end. What is that saying? What in the world is that saying? That we, brothers and sisters, are tabernacles. We are houses of God. Little cathedrals. That is exactly why we were created. You know, it was read in Sabbath school today that Adam picked all the names of the animals. And what was said? That those very names were what? Marty. Were what God would have picked if He was the one speaking. They were the names He wanted. Okay? So, yes, there's free will. Absolutely there's free will. And I'm not taking that away. But there's something to be said here. Do you follow where I'm going? He's made in the image of God, in the likeness of God. If God is in me and we're tabernacling together, I'm going to be starry-eyed. You follow me? In every heart, there's a cross and there's a throne. And if I'm on the cross, he's on the throne. If I'm on the throne, he's on the cross. You follow me? There's just two seats. So if I'm on the cross, 
then I'm looking at him. And it's almost like our minds are one. You follow me? Our hearts are one. Our desires are one. We become one man. And think about this. When God has all of his church as little tabernacles coming together as one tabernacle, it's like this giant mosaic, if you, might, if you will, that when you bring it all together, it makes the perfect picture that God is looking for. And this isn't just a still picture. This is a movie. You follow me? God.